Hey everybody, Aaron here from Panedia and I'm going to give you a quick rundown of very useful functions in Premiere for doing 360 video or VR production. What we're looking at now is our 2016 commercial showreel. You can look at this online as well. Have a look in the description below and you'll see a link to the final product. But what we're going to do is add the ability to look at a VR view into our player. And we've just added that in there. As you can see, we've got the flat view, the equi rectangular view up there, and we can then set settings like monoscopic or stereoscopic. We can set the angle of view of our device for an Oculus Rift or a, a Gear VR or a Google Cardboard. And then once we've done that, we can go into VR mode and bang, we're no longer in the flat equi rectangular mode. Now we're in the virtual reality mode. Now we can see approximately what our viewers can see when they look at this video in a Gear VR, a HTC Vive, an Oculus Rift. This is extremely important for figuring out all sorts of aspects of a VR production. Next we're going to look at the Metal Skybox plugin for Adobe Premiere and other software. It is a paid plugin that gives you all sorts of VR 360 video functionality. Now what we're going to look at here is the transition from one scene to another. It's really important that your point of interest from one cut is the same as your point of interest for the next cut. So we're going to play this a few times just to have a look at that. Look at the direction we're facing when we leave the scene with the girl in the room to the girl on the scooter. You can see that they are not aligned. In one we're facing slightly to the left, in the other we're facing to the right. So we want to align those so that when you move from one scene to the next in virtual reality, your view matches. Now to do this, we need to grab the skybox effect from the metal folder over here, drag it across to our effects controls. And now we've got the ability to pan on various axes. And here we're going to pan on the Y axis. And you can see there that the image just rotates in behind. Of course, these images are 360 degrees, which means they can rotate th the full 360. Now, if we play it again, we can okay. look at where is our point of interest in the cut one and where is our point of interest in cut two. And we can see now that they are aligned. So if you're looking at the girl in the first scene, you'll also be looking at the girl in the second scene. Or you may decide that you want to be looking at the girl in the first scene and you want to be looking down the road in the second scene. That's fine. You just need to adjust the Y axis up there and you can be looking any direction you want as you cut from scene one to scene two as you can see here. That's your call as the editor, but the tools here, it. Adobe Premiere and Metal Skybox give you the ability to decide where you want to be looking when you enter the, the next scene. As she got me out of there. The next thing we're going to look at is a transition effect, and this is the Mobius zoom effect, again by Metal with their Skybox tools. The interesting thing about working with 360 content is that if anything goes off the edges of the frame, left, right, up or down, it will affect the end result. Because what you're looking at is, a, is an unwrapped sphere. So think of it that way. Anything that goes off the edge of any frame or any effect that doesn't apply equally from left to right, top to bottom, is going to cause you problems. So what you'll find is that a lot of transitions that work in traditional video do not work in VR. And we'll show you that now by having a quick look at a cross zoom effect. We add the zoom and whoa, that looked fantastic. Perfect. But wait a minute. It worked when we're looking at the flat view, which is where it's meant to work. Let's look at it in VR mode. Okay, now we're in VR mode. Zoom effect looks good still. But wait a minute. Let's look around the back and see what happens behind you when you look in that mode. Ah, now it doesn't match. You can see there, there's an extreme variation from one edge of the frame to the next, which causes these big lines and completely ruins the shot. One more time, complete mess. A lot of transitions are going to do that to you in any sort of traditional software package. So what you need is effect specifically designed for VR. Of course, this one here by Metal, in their Skybox package for Premiere is specifically designed for VR. So we'll drag that across. This is the Mobius zoom effect and we'll have a look. 
That's quite similar to what we saw before. How is it any different when we're looking in VR mode? Well, let's have a look. In VR mode, looks good. Ah, see there? No longer do we get that big cut line right through the middle of the picture. Now we get this cool zooming out effect. And so what happens is that that effect works all across the image, top to bottom, left to right. It looks good from any view and you don't get any big cut lines when you're joining the two edges. So now we're going to look at some audio cleanup in Premiere using Adobe Audition. Hi, I'm Oliver Clark from Olympus and welcome to our Endo Alpha 3D OR. So our talent delivers these lines very nicely, but we want to clean up the edges. This one's actually pretty clean, but let's have a look at how we would do that. We'll extend that out a little bit to give us some area where the talent isn't speaking, and then we will open this clip automatically in Audition. Hi, I'm Oliver Clark from Olympus, and welcome to our Endo Alpha 3D OR. So there it is, the same line. We're going to grab that first section there where we might have some noise and where our talent isn't talking. And then we're going to go down to capture noise print. And what that will do is sample the noise in that area. Then we're going to select the entire track. Select all could go control A or select all on the menu. And now we're going to process that track and get rid of that noise. So we've got noise reduction process. And what this will do is take out the noise that was sampled in that print just a moment ago. You can play that back, you can listen to that, you can adjust a bunch of parameters, but we'll apply it for now. And that noise will be removed from the audio track. So now it is Hi. super clean. I'm Oliver Clark from Olympus, and welcome to our Endo Alpha 3D OR. Okay, now we will save that. And then we shall close it and it will be automatically updated in Premiere. Boom, there it is. So our updated audio is done. We can drag that back to the area that we want to keep in the final production. Hi, I'm Oliver Clark from Olympus and welcome to our Endo Alpha 3D OR. And there we have it, super clean. Hi, I'm Oliver Clark from Olympus and welcome to our Endo Alpha 3D OR. For our final item, we're going to look at color correction using Lumetri Color, which is the brilliant new color correction system in Premiere. So we have there an absolutely stunning video of the Sydney Opera House at 2016 Vivid Light Festival. We've opened up the nest and see here we're turning off the various layers and stripping this shot back to its original form. Here we have the original shot. We turn off the final Lumetri layer and that's our raw image. Certainly not terrible, but nothing like the final result we have. We'll turn that Lumetri on. We'll turn on the next layer, which you can see is adjusting the contrast and the color. You can see a big, big adjustment there to the color. Then we'll have a look at the next layer, which is our tripod patch down the bottom, fixes up some stitching issues and gets rid of the tripod. Then we bring the sky in on the next layer. Sky makes an enormous difference, but even the sky needed Lumetri effects applied to it because it needed to look natural. So we needed to bring it right back to really match with the rest of the scene. As it was raw, it's too bright and unnatural looking. And then we apply one final level of Lumetri across the whole top of the image just to brighten it and give it, a, give it just that, that real hit at the end. Huge difference altogether from the original file to what we end up with and all done fairly simply just with a bunch of layers in Premiere using Lumetri color and some masks. So there we have it, 360 video editing with Adobe Premiere. We've got our color, we've got our audio, we've done transitions and a whole bunch of stuff all within Adobe Premiere and with the Metal Skybox plugin. That's it for now, and I hope to be speaking with you again soon on 360 Video.